Swift is a star. And now we're going to get to see it in prime time. I'm looking forward to seeing... Everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of The League. Your host, as always, Harley Dugan. Let's get into debunking a theory. Now, one of the comments on my YouTube channel uh, down below was on a video of my biggest worries for the Houston Texans season going into next year. And the comment was a C.J. Stroud sophomore slump. Now, I am here to debunk the theory as best as possible. Now, obviously things can happen. This can absolutely happen, but I didn't have it as one of my biggest worries or even a minor worry because I believe CJ Stroud is different than under quarterbacks. And I do believe that with full faith. There's something different about CJ Stroud that opposing fan bases just don't see what we're seeing here in Houston. The man just looks like he's built different quite simply put that way. Um, but I mean, anything could happen, but I believe there are some ways to debunk this theory. And I think the best way is grabbing one of ESPN's best NFL analysts in Mina Kimes. She goes into really good depth here from a clip on ESPN NFL Live. Make sure to check her out anywhere on Instagram, Twitter. You can search her on YouTube as well. She has great, great content. I believe she debunks a lot of this theory in this clip. We also have via Aaron Wilson, and this is coming from Bobby Slowick on CJ Stroud going into year two, said that he's picking up right where he left off, added year two for a quarterback is a big year, very impactful year that sets the trajectory for the rest of his career. Now we really get to dive in. He's on board and all in. And that's just fantastic to hear. You get to see a little more in-depth analysis from Mina Kimes here with C.J. Stroud and what will not be a sophomore slump. I am telling you guys right now, the offense is too powerful to have a sophomore slump from C.J. Stroud. He is going to have a fantastic year, I believe. So without further ado, let's get into this video clip of Mina Kimes talking about C.J. Stroud. Uh, granted, this was around when the schedule came out, but still relevant, still has all of the guys on the roster, Stephon Diggs, everything else. This video was about a week and a half ago, I want to say. Um, but while you're at it, make sure you are smashing the like button, easy to smash your life. Go ahead and comment down below, how do you feel about CJ Stroud sophomore slump? How do you feel about that theory that opposing fan bases are praying for? You know they are. You know they don't want the Houston Texans to rock and roll and do their thing. We're going to be swarming regardless, guys. So go ahead, drop a swarm down in the comment section if you're really about the life. You better be swarming. You swarm or die. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into this clip. Hit that subscribe bell. Hit, hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit the notification button while you're at it. I mean, it's right next to each other. You might as well do it. We're on the road to 10K. Let's do this. Year two, CJ Stroud looking at the schedule. Any concerns jump to mind? You know, there is something to the idea that rookie quarterback breaks out year two, the league has tape on him. I get that. But I think there's a lot of other reasons why C.J. Stroud could be even better this year or his progress yeah. and development could continue, starting with this. Last season, according to FTN Fantasy, which tracks injuries, the, fo the, te the Texans had the most injured offensive line, not in the NFL, mm but ever since they had started tracking them. So CJ Stroud was <laughs> exceptional despite that, which by the way, that was a huge reason why they couldn't run the ball. He was amazing despite yep. the fact that they had no run game. Now you throw in Stephon Dix, which Diggs, pardon me, which should make it even easier to run the ball. Uh, and then you got another year with Bobby Slowick, their offensive coordinator. We thought he might get hired away as a head coach, but you have continuity there. So I just think there's a lot of things working in Stroud's favor that should counteract any year two stumbles. Yeah, and on the other side, like, this is a team that has more than C.J. Stroud. There's an argument to be made that at the wide receiver position, they have the best trio in ball. We watched Nico Collins yeah. become a breakout star. Tank Dell and his chemistry with C.J. Stroud and obviously acquiring Stephon Diggs. Oh, by the way, we couldn't run the ball last year. Let's go out and acquire Joe Mixon that gives us a run game mm. that only makes Coach Slowick even better in dialing up play action because now people actually have to be scared that you can hand the ball off and run. 
And defensively, they went out and got pass rushers. Christian Harris, entering his third year, seemed to be a star late in the season. And Derek Stingley showed everybody why he was the number three overall pick, yeah. mm. even in front of Sauce Gardner. This Ooh. team is poised to make a bigger splash this year than they did last. And why not? And you know why they have a hard schedule? Because they won the division. Because C.J. Stroud was that good. Because D'Amico Ryans is a star. And now we're going to get to see it in prime time. I'm looking forward to seeing them play the Jets. That was C.J. Stroud's worst game, and he left that game with a concussion. Yeah. He's going to have an opportunity in prime time to show the world who he is. <laughs> Whoa, okay, okay. Ryan Clark got the goosebumps going. He had the, the hairs coming up, man. I mean, my goodness, goosebumps galore from Ryan Clark there. I really wanted to focus on Mina Kimes, but damn, that got me hyped. That got me going. And it, it's tough because, man, it creates it creates some heavy expectations for this Texans team considering the whole entire offense. Uh, but Mina Kimes mentioned some great points. This was the most injured offensive line since they were tracking injured offensive linemen. This was the most injured offensive line group in the NFL ever since they started tracking. And this is with C.J. Stroud, a rookie quarterback who overcame that and not only made the playoffs, but won the division at that too. So now, given that the offensive line should be on paper better, B, you gave C.J. Stroud a hell of a lot more weapons. C, you got yourself a legitimate running back in Joe Mixon, not Devin Singletary. Shout out to Devin Singletary. He did a damn good job for you last year, though, in spare time. But you got a legitimate running back now. D, you got continuity because she mentioned Bobby Slowick is back. You brought back Dalton Schultz. You extended Nico Collins. You still got Tank Dell. You got a lot of guys still within this system that know what they're going to need to do going into year two. More weapons. Ryan Clark mentioned pass rush, the free agents and offseason moves the Houston Texans did. All in all, these are all great reasons as to why C.J. Stroud will not be having a sophomore slump. So I am sorry to opposing fan bases. Y'all can all kiss our ass because at the end of the day, C.J. Stroud is going to be rocking and rolling and he is going to be throwing touchdowns galore. I expect at the very least 25 or more touchdowns. That's how much I am expecting from C.J. Stroud. 25 feels like a down year for me, but at the end of the day, the Houston Texans in this offense, there is no ceiling for this team because damn, that offense with these three wide receivers, the best trio in the NFL, Joe Mixon, Dalton Schultz, Cade Stover, offensive line looks pretty darn good. Defense looks really damn good. Damn it, the Houston Texans, they got me over. They, they, they got the expectations growing. They got the goosebumps going down. They got the chills going up their back as a Texans fan this is one of the best times to be alive we have a legitimate shot at actually going all the way and grabbing a damn super bowl as always guys go astros go rockets go texans you have a blessed day